Tejo vari madam yata pini mayo yatra trisargo mesha dam nasrena sada nirasta kuhakam satyam param dimahi O my Lord Sri Krishna, son of Vasudeva O all pervading personality of Godhead I offer my respectful obeisances unto you I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primal cause of all causes of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge onto the heart of Brahmaji, the original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen in fire or land seen on water, only because of him do the material universes Temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature. Actions of the three modes. Appear factual, although they are unreal. Therefore, I meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations in the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma projita kaichovo cha paramo nirmatsanam satam vedyam vastava matra vastu shivadam tapa trayon mulanam shimad bhagavate mahamuni krite kimba purir ishwaraha Sajyohidi avurujyate tra kriti bihi susubis takshanat completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth, which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity is sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam, by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. The Gama Kalpaturur Galitam Falam Sukamukha Amrita Dravya Samyutam Pibata Bhagavatam Rasam Alayam Muhur ahoraska buvi bhavakaha. O expert and thoughtful men, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadeva Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all including liberated souls. Shinvatam Svakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Hiryantak Sto Badrani Vidunati Srihitsatam To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures or to hear 
from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita. Is it self-righteous activity? And for one who hears about Krishna, or Krishna who is dwelling in everyone's heart, acts as a best-wishing friend and purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Nasta praesu bhadresu Nityam bhagavatam seva bhagavata sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhakti Bhavati Naistiki In this way a devotee who constantly engages I'm sorry, in this way a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. By development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance, and thus material lusts and avarice are diminished. Evam prasana manaso bhagavat bhakti yogataha bhagavat tattva vijnanam mukta sangasya jayate When these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness, becomes enlivened by devotional service, and understands the science of God perfectly. Bidyate hridaya grantis chedyante sarvasamsaya chiyante chiyante kasyadam I'm sorry, chiyante chasyakarmani triste evat manishwari Thus Bhakti Yoga severs the hard knot of material affection and enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram, understanding of the supreme absolute truth personality of Godhead. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 15, Text 27. Desikalata Yukta Tani Vishakalaratani Kritapu Pasamanicha Kritapu Pasamanicha Harantis Maratas Chittam Harantis Maratas Chittam Govinda Bihitani Me Govinda Bihitani Me <coughs> Translation now I am attracted to those instructions imparted to me by the personality of Godhead Govinda because they are impregnated with instructions for relieving the burning heart in all circumstances of time and space. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Herein Arjuna refers to the instruction of the Bhagavad Gita. which is, was imparted to him by the Lord in the battlefields of Kurukshetra. The Lord left behind him the instructions of the Bhagavad Gita, not for the benefit of Arjuna alone, but also for all time and in all lands. The Bhagavad Gita, being spoken by the Supreme Personality of God, it is the essence of all Vedic wisdom. It is nicely presented by the Lord himself for all who have very little time to go through the vast Vedic literatures like the Upanishads, Puranas, Vedanta Sutras. It is put within the study of the great historical epic Mahabharata, which was especially prepared, prepared for the less intelligent class, namely the women, the laborers, 
and those who are worthless descendants of the brahmanas. Kshatriyas and higher sections of the vices. The problem which arose in the heart of Arjuna on the battlefield of Kurukshetra was solved by the teachings of the Bhagavad Gita. Again, after the departure of the Lord from the vision of earthly people, when Arjuna was face to face with being vanquished in his acquired power and prominence, he wanted again to remember the great teachings of the Bhagavad Gita just to teach all concerned that Bhagavad Gita can be consulted in all critical times, not only for solace from all kinds of mental ag agonies, but also for the way out of great entanglements which may embarrass one in some critical hour. Very important point. The merciful Lord left behind him great teachings of the Bhagavad Gita so that one can take the instruction to the Lord even when he is not visible to material eyesight. Material senses cannot have any estimation of the Supreme Lord, but by his inconceivable power, the Lord can incarnate himself to the sense perception of the conditioned souls in a suitable manner through the agency of matter, which is also another form of the Lord's manifested energy. Thus, Bhagavad Gita, or any authentic scriptural sound representation of the Lord, is also the incarnation of the Lord. There is no difference between the sound representation of the Lord and the Lord himself. One can derive the same benefit of the Bhagavad Gita as Arjuna did in the personal presence of the Lord. The faithful being who is desirous of being liberated from the clutches of material existence can easily take advantage of Bhagavad Gita. And with this in view, the Lord instructed Arjuna as if Arjuna were in need of it. In the Bhagavad Gita, five important factors of knowledge have been delineated pertaining to the Supreme Lord, the living being, nature, time and space, and process of activity. Out of these, the Supreme Lord and the living being are qualitatively one. The difference between the two has been analyzed as a difference between the whole and the part and parcel. Nature is inert. And matter, uh, I'm sorry, nature is inert. Nature is inert matter, displaying the interaction of the three different modes. The eternal time and unlimited space are considered to be beyond the existence of the material nature. Activities of a living being are different varieties of aptitudes which can entrap or liberate the living being within and without material nature. All these subject matters are concisely discussed in the Bhagavad Gita, and later the subject matters are elaborated in Srimad Bhagavatam for further enlightenment. Out of the five subjects, the Supreme Lord, the living entity, nature, time and space are eternal. But the living entity, nature and time are under the direction of the Supreme Lord, who is absolute and completely independent of any other control. The Supreme Lord is the supreme controller. The material activity living being is beginningless. But it can be rectified by transferal into the spiritual quality. Thus, it can cease its material qualitative reactions. Both the Lord and the living entity are cognizant and both have the sense of identification, of being conscious as a living force. But the living being under the condition of material nature called Mahatattva, misidentifies herself as being different from the Lord. The whole scheme of Vedic wisdom is targeted to the aim of eradicating such a misconception and thus liberating living being from the illusion of material identification. When such an illusion is eradicated by knowledge and renunciation, the living beings are responsible actors and enjoyers. 
The sense of enjoyment in the Lord is real, but such a sense in the living being is a sort of wishful desire only. This difference in consciousness is the distinction of the two identities, namely Lord and a living being. Otherwise, there's no difference between the Lord and the living being. So let me read that again. The sense of enjoyment of the Lord is real, but such a sense in the living being is a sort of wishful desire only. This difference in consciousness is the distinction of the two identities, namely the Lord and the living being. Otherwise, there's no difference between the Lord and the living being. The living being is therefore eternally one and different simultaneously. The whole instruction of Bhagavad Gita stands on this principle. In the Bhagavad Gita, the Lord and living beings are both described as sanatana, or eternal, and the Lord's abode far above the material sky is also described as sanatana. The living being is invited to live in the sanatana existence of the Lord, and the process which can help a living being to approach the Lord's abode, where the liberated activity of the soul is exhibited, is called sanatan dharma. One cannot, however, reach the eternal abode of the Lord without being free from the misconception of material identification. And the Bhagavad Gita gives us the clue how to achieve the stage of perfection, the process of being liberated from the misconception of material identification is called in different stages fruit of activity, empiric philosophy, and devotional service up to transcendental realization. Such transcendental realization is made possible by dovetailing all the above items in relation with the Lord. Prescribed duties of the human being as directed in the Vedas can gradually purify the sinful mind of the conditioned soul and raise him to the stage of knowledge. The purified stage of acquiring knowledge becomes the basis of devotional service to the Lord. As long as one is engaged in researching the solution of the problems of life, his knowledge is called jnana, or purified knowledge. But on realizing the actual solution of life, one come, becomes situated in the devotional service of the Lord. The Bhagavad Gita begins with the problems of life by discriminating the soul from the elements of matter and proves by all reason and argument that the soul is indestructible in all circumstances. And that the outer covering of matter, the body, the mind, change for another term of material existence, which is full of miseries. The Bhagavad Gita is therefore meant for terminating all different types of miseries. And Arjuna took shelter of this great knowledge, which had been imparted to him during the Kurukshetra battle. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So, this is very important information. And ultimately, all this is predicated on the fact that one accepts a bona fide spiritual master. And this is explained. Tadviganartam sagurum eva bhikachet samit pranishrochyam Brahmanistam. To learn the transcendental matter, subject matter, one must approach a, a spiritual master. In doing so, he should carry fuel to burn and sacrifice. The symptom of such a spiritual master is that he is expert in understanding the Vedic conclusion, and therefore he constantly engages in the, ser in the service of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So, therefore, Arjuna accepted a spiritual master because he realized he was not able to solve the problems of life. And he was in a very dire situation one hour before this great battle of, of Kurukshetra was going to take place. And he got, as we say, cold feet. Uh, he, he didn't want to engage in the battle. He didn't want to do his duty. But because he accepted Krishna as a spiritual master, 
Then Krishna took the responsibility to enlighten him, clear away all his doubts by answering every one of his questions, and thus uh, made him convinced that following Krishna's instructions is the solution to all problems of life. And this is uh, said many times in the Bhagavad Gita, especially in the sixth chapter, where it says, that one should always hear and, and mind or take uh, the dictation of the Lord as one's responsibility. So it says, Chitat mana prasantasya paramat masama dita sitosna sukuduke su tata mana pamanayo. For one who has conquered the mind, this is a sixth chapter, seventh verse, for one who has conquered the mind, the super soul is already reached, for he has attained tranquility. Such a man, happiness and distress, heat and cold, honor and dishonor are all the same. Now, you understand the English, but do you actually do we actually understand the English? That's the real question, uh, because you can only understand what's being said here in this verse by Krishna by experiencing it. You can theoretically understand it, but that's not enough. If you've experienced this, and everybody experiences this in material life, everybody, 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 there's no exception. But to understand what this experience is all about, one must read Bhagavad Gita and hear the explanations of Krishna to Arjuna. Otherwise, even though we experience these things, what is it? Uh, these dualities of life, honor and dishonor, heat and cold, happiness and distress, it doesn't mean that we understand them just because we experience it. We have to hear the explanation of Krishna. So in the purport it says, actually every living entity is intended to abide by the dictation of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is seated in everyone's heart as Paramatma. Now why is that? Because every one of us is taking the dictation of someone. Like let's say you work in a company, you're obliged to accept the dictation of a team leader or an ultimately the uh, CEO or the uh, overall manager of the whole company. You can't say, oh, I don't listen to what he says. I can do as I like. Well, you will be quickly fired, thrown out, uh, expelled from the company. So everyone's... Uh, who works in a particular company is is obliged to take dictation from somebody in that company. In the same way, that's the constitutional position of the living entity. The living entity is meant to take dictation from Krishna. And if you don't take dictation from Krishna, you're going to take dictation. Dictation means someone tells you to do something and you're obliged to do it. But you don't have to do it. You can refuse to do it but then there are consequences. That's why Krishna tells Arjuna in the 18th chapter, he says, look here, Arjuna. Uh, it's only because of illusion that you're declining to act according to my direction or, or dictation. But compelled by the work born of your own nature, you will act all the same. So, uh, then he says, uh, if you do not act according to my direction or my dictation of what you should do and do not fight, then you will be falsely directed. By your nature, you will have to be engaged in warfare. So he's saying, either you follow what I say and you'll be liberated from the negative effects of what's going to happen or you don't listen to me and you'll become uh, impounded or conditioned by the negative effects. Definitely it's going to be negative because it's war. War is never a happy 
It never has a happy uh, ending. It's horrible. It's, it's hellish. It's full of misery, the worst misery, mental and physical. You see people being killed all around you, and you know you can be killed also. So no one has a happy experience of war. I had an uncle. His name was Joe, and he fought in uh, the uh, European theater of war in World War II, especially the final German attack on the, uh, the, the biggest German attack on the Allied forces in, in Belgium. And my uncle was a sharpshooter. That means that he had a special rifle who has a special uh, magnifying uh, uh, type of uh, uh, attachment. And uh, he was a killer. He would kill from a distance. Well, uh, he went through the hell of that uh, battle. It's called Battle of the Bulge. And it affected him the rest of his life. And he, his theory of life was, man is an animal. And that was it. You know, he's an animal. He has animal instincts. And there's no such real human uh, differentiating qualities, and uh, he was he was a, a very skeptical person, very negative. He would always find a negative point of view in any situation. So uh, he got affected by his experience in the war, and that is uh, the general theme of most people who engage in in active uh, battle. In fact, in the United States Army, you have about a million and a half men and women in the Army, or in, in the Navy and the Air Force and so forth. But you only have about 180,000 soldiers who are trained in actually fighting and killing. Because you have to be psychologically prepared to kill someone. You can't, it's not that you, as soon as you have a gun, you can shoot it and kill someone. Uh, in order to shoot, to kill, you have to have a, a preparation, psychological and physical preparation to do it. Therefore, not everybody in the army is a killer. The, most of the people are, uh, are in the supply chain for the killers so that they can not be worried about eating and drinking water and, and all those things. They can just be concerned about uh, killing. So... When you have two sides of killers fighting each other, it's hell. It's horrible. It affects you the rest of your life. So here Krishna is basically telling Arjuna, listen, if you listen to me, you will not be affected by all this, and you will please me by doing this service. And Arjuna doesn't want to do it. He knows what it's going to be like. He's, 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 he's been in battles before, but this is the greatest battle in the history of the world. So everyone, Prabhupada in the purport says, actually, to uh, 6.7, actually every living entity is intended to abide by the dictation of the Supreme Personality of Godhead who is seated in everyone's heart as Paramatma. So if you don't take the dictation of God, you're going to take the dictation from someone else because it's our constitutional position to be dictated to. When the mind is misled by the external illusory energy, one becomes entangled in material activities. Therefore, as soon as one's mind is controlled through one of the yoga systems, one should be considered to have already reached the destination. One has to abide by superior dictation. When one's mind is fixed on the superior nature, he has no alternative but to follow the dictation of the Supreme. The mind must admit some superior dictation and follow it. The effect of controlling the mind is that one automatically follows the dictation of the Paramatma or Supersoul because this transcendental position is at once achieved by one who is in Krishna consciousness. The devotee of the Lord is unaffected by the dualities of material existence 
namely distress and happiness, cold and heat, etc. This state is practical samadhi or absorption in the supreme. So here it says that uh, the effect of controlling mind is that one automatically follows the dictation of the paramatma or super soul. Now, that has to, you have to understand that in the context of the Bhagavad Gita and not speculate on what that means. Now, speculating what, on what that means is you think, oh, well, I will listen to what Chaitanya Chaita, Chaita Guru tells me. Now, what is this Chaita Guru? Chaita Guru is that internal voice of the Paramatma. But wait a minute, hold your horses. It's not so it's as simple as that. I knew this one person. He was a new devotee in Berkeley, California. And he was just learning about Krishna consciousness. And he heard in some class about Chaita Guru. So he picked up on that, and and therefore, uh, one day, one time he was driving a car. I was sitting uh, as a passenger, and uh, he was telling me that uh, he doesn't accept anybody else's instructions except Chaita Guru. And I said, "Really?" I said, uh, "What's Chaita Guru telling you to do right now?" And he went like, "No, he was driving." Right? He goes. Like that, you know, he closed his eyes, you know, I got scared, you know. And he said, and then he turned the car uh, to the right, you know, made a right hand turn. He said, Chaita Guru just told me to turn right on the street. I said, really? I said, what is Chaita Guru telling you to do now? And then he went, like that. And then he turned left. <laughs> And I told him, I said, this is nonsense. You're not listening to Chaita Guru. You're just <laughs> listening to some goofy concept in your mind. Because this is explained in Bhagavad Gita. In 18th chapter, 58th verse. You see, that's why it says a little knowledge is a dangerous thing. So this person had a little knowledge. Now he, he hears this this word Chaita Guru in a class, and all of a sudden he thinks, oh, now I don't have to take any guru, I just have Chaita Guru, right? You see how people speculate, right? So if you look at 18th chapter, 58th verse, it, it says, I, I won't read the whole ver, uh, purport, but it says, no conditioned soul actually knows what is to be done and what is not to be done. But a person who acts in Krishna consciousness is free to act because everything is prompted by Krishna from within and confirmed by the spiritual master without. That's understanding correctly. In other words, let's say you're dreaming and in the dream, Krishna appears. He's got the peacock feather, he's got the kostuba jewel and he's, he's bluish black and, and yellow bright clothes and he's smiling and he says, wake up, go down to the kitchen, get the biggest knife out of the drawer, come back upstairs and stab your wife to death. So he wakes up and says, oh my God, Krishna just told me to go kill my wife. Chaita Guru is speaking to me. I saw him, he spoke to me. You know? Now, what should you do in a situation like that Taking into account what I just read, 18th chapter, 58th verse, where it says, but a person who acts in Krishna consciousness is free to act because everything is prompted by Krishna from within and confirmed by the spiritual master without. What should you do? So the same thing is said in Srimad Bhagavatam, 1st Canto, 7th chapter, 5th verse, Within, the super soul becomes spiritual master, and without, he becomes spiritual master as scriptures, saints, and initiator, spiritual master. So before you go downstairs to the kitchen and get that knife to stab your wife to death, you should call up your guru and say, Maharaj, I just saw Krishna in my dream, and he told me this. What should I do? And Maharaj will say, 
ignore what you saw in your dream. It's nonsense. But most people don't do that. Most people commit some heinous act and after they get caught and they're in a big mess and they're in anxiety and they're crying, they come to Guru Selmar and say, oh, this, this thing happened. And you know what Maharaj says? Why didn't you come to me before you acted? You see, that's why Prabhupada says, before any major decision, you should first speak to Guru. He doesn't even say major decision. Before any decision, the disciple should first speak to Guru. Guru means Siksha or Diksha Guru. So we see why people get into trouble. Just like this idiot who heard the word Chaita Guru, he thought he doesn't need any other Guru. He's getting direct inspiration from Chaita Guru. And that's complete nonsense. Because as it says in 1, uh, five and one point seven point five Srimad Bhagavatam within the super soul becomes spiritual master and without he becomes spiritual master as scriptures, saints and initiator spiritual master. So this Bhagavad Gita this this purport you probably want to read it again tomorrow because there's so many points in here that are significant. Uh, and I think we'll do that. Uh, are there any questions? I don't want to go longer. We already spoke too much. Any questions about this purport? Now, uh, how one will have faith after receiving or after being prompted by Super Soul? Well, contradicted why? You mean, you mean spiritual master is going to tell you something like different example, than what you saw? The example, yeah, the example you just gave about somebody in the dream seeing Krishna telling me one thing and then confirming that with the saint who said, no, just the opposite, don't do it. So now, what would determine that person was right and wrong? Falena Purichite. You judge from the result. So the example I gave is an extreme example. You know. He sees in a dream, Krishna's telling him, and it looks like Krishna, right? He's telling him, go and kill your wife. And uh, when he talks to his guru, the guru says, ignore that, that's, that's nonsense. So let's say he didn't listen to his guru, and he goes and kills his wife, what would happen? Yeah, but Arjuna didn't see Krishna in a dream. He's actually standing in front of him. We're talking about someone sees in a dream. I don't know, I've read somewhere they saying that when you dream about Krishna or by a guru, a saint, it's, it's as good as a reality. Well, so what, if, what if in your dream you, you you're... Guru or Krishna says, go and kill your mother. What are you going to do? And he's going to do the, the way like Parashuram, uh, Jamadagni said, Parashuram, show back the hell in your mother. Okay, but see, Parashuram uh, is not an ordinary person. You're not allowed to kill anyone unless you can bring him back to life. So what did Parashuram do? I mean... He asked his father to bring her, bring her back to life, you see. So you have to be very careful here. You're not on the like equal level with Parasaram. You just can't go around killing people because you think you saw it in a dream. Judge from the result. What would happen if you, if you killed your mother? What would happen? Would, would, would you be a hero or would you be a criminal? Some think that's what Krishna told him. 
you're not sure because Prabhupada says if you don't follow regulative principles, principles, your mind will play tricks on you. You'll start imagining things that are not actually true. Let me get. I'll get that quote. And I'll show you where he says that. So let's say you are following the regular principles. Do you think you would dream about killing your mother? No. But if you're not, you could have a dream like that. But the main point is, as it says in 1858, as it says in Srimad Bhagavatam 1.7.5, that before acting, uh, it says, but a person who acts in Krishna consciousness is free to act because everything is prompted by Krishna from within and confirmed by the spiritual master. It doesn't say everything is prompted by Krishna from within. Then you're not actually free to act. You must also have it confirmed by the spiritual master. Well, okay, it says, spiritual master, in this verse, it says, uh, in, in the Srimad Bhagavatam 1.7.5, it says that uh, from without, Krishna becomes spiritual master as scriptures, saints, and initiator spiritual master. So have three criterions that you get, uh, let's say, validation from without. If you just act from what you see within, in a dream, let's say, it has to be confirmed by a spiritual authority because the mind can play tricks on you, especially in a dream. Especially if, <laughs> if what you dream is, go and kill your wife. You see. These are the, why am I bringing this up? This is a very interesting point, and it's, it's and how many people understand these things? Right? If you think, well, Prabhupada said that you know if you dream uh, about Krishna, it's 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 the truth. Well, it could be true, yeah, but have it confirmed by Guru to be sure. Okay, Sila Prabhupada ki jai Hari Hari